Nothing short of perfection. Amen. Really? <laughs> really? All right, let's do this again. Good afternoon. Welcome to Government Affairs. We're going to have to do a lot of corrective action on the obviously <laughs> flawed Senate bills. Um, we're first going to bring up Senate Bill 117. Senator Martin, I think, is presenting on that, and um, he's going to tell us on why the, the state is in danger if we don't do this. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee. Senate 117 is a it's administration bill, so it's governor's bill. Over the summer, this past summer, there was a study committee done uh, that looked into, you know, the cyber cyber status of our state. And during that time, we found that there were many varied policies and procedures that were being taken by different agencies across the state. Uh, and we found it's actually difficult for us to, if not impossible, for us to get cyber liability insurance, which is um, very important in this day and age when cyber attacks and, cyber and data breaches and that sort of thing are becoming more and more, um, they're happening more and more often. So this bill is simply, what it's going to do, it's going to allow the Georgia Technology Authority, it gives them the authority to set those policies and procedures for all the executive departments and agencies so that there are, um, we have a single single um, single procedure and policy to make sure that it's up to code and, and strong enough to protect the citizens of this Georgia, great state of Georgia. I'll yield for questions. All right, any questions for the illustrious senator? Representative Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. I um, noticed Senator on page one line 13 we're adding the term or legislative branch in there what's the purpose of that normally we aren't described as an agency so just to make sure there's a separation of powers so that the governor can't you know our any 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 agency that falls with them under our authority would not be under the authority of that of this of the but shall not include any That's agency correct. with yes, judicial or yes, legislative sir. branch absolutely okay <laughs> and, and so what was this bill going to allow to happen that can't happen now it's going to, it allows the technology authority to set, and you can look at it in line, in line 45 is where that is, to set policies and standards for, for agencies all across. So right now we have silos that are built. Each agency has their own policy or procedure for cyber. Some don't have any. Others just, others have stronger, <laughs> others not so strong. So, so this is going to allow us to have a uniform cyber standard uh, across the state. And right now, they, they don't have the authority to do that? That is correct. And we're having trouble getting other agencies to go along with what they want? I think this just simplifies the process. It makes it easier. It makes it very clear that there's the authority exists. Does this stretch beyond state government to anything local? I don't believe so. You think it does? No, no, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions, members of the committee? All right, um, anybody else want to speak on behalf of the bill or concerns with the bill that's in the audience today? And just for my, show me where it says cyber. It does not say cyber. But one of the, it's technology, which that deals with. Yeah, but technology is a broader word than cyber. It is, it is. I don't want you to sell it to me as one thing and we find out later it's something else. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the purpose of it. It doesn't mention specifically cyber, but the purpose of it is for that. It's for what? For the cyber, for the cyber security. And my point would be, then why didn't it say cyber instead of technology? Because you understand technology is much broader than cyber. Would you agree with that? I do agree with that. Yes, sir. You going to weigh in GTA anywhere on that? I mean, is this just solely for cyber purposes? Since it's not mentioned in the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Jeff McCord with the uh, Georgia Technology Authority. And uh, the intention is, well, the, the, the impetus was, uh, as uh, Senator Martin said, uh, flowing out of the, the cyber study committee that the Senate had last year. And it was uh, uh, discovered at that time that there were a number of agencies that GTA does not have any authority over uh, in, within the executive branch. 
So uh, when we were uh, instituting cyber policies or any, as you say, any IT policy, those agencies, we had no insight into them. Uh, the uh, cyber insurance companies were asking us to uh, give them some assurance that the state was protected and we could not do that. And so that really was the impetus. But uh, instead of specifying that it was just for cybersecurity, we did expand it to say policies and standards and guidelines because that's where the cybersecurity will be. I, I just don't want a shiny object where we're all sold it's this. Right, right, right. It was, it was the impetus for it, but it really, as you, as you point out, it does cover a, large, a broader spectrum, but the cybersecurity policies will be covered in uh, the, the GTA standards and policies and guidelines. Representative Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. McCord, thank you. Um, yes, and to the Chairman's point, uh, on line 45 with the word technology there, to your knowledge, do we define the word technology anywhere in our code as to what that means? Obviously, it has a common parlance, but do, do we define it legally anywhere in our code? I know it's, I don't see it in the bill, because like, sometimes things are in the code section defined in other places. I believe I would have to go look. I think there is a definition uh, in our statute. What does that definition include? It's 45, uh, it's 50-25-4. Uh, 50, uh, 50 50-25-4. Yes, sir. Yeah. What does that definition include, then, if we do have a definition of technology? I would have to look it up. I'm, I'm sorry. You think it would include phone systems, for example? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'd, I'd have to look at it and see. Probably would. I, I think it does. Yeah. Uh, networks, um, connectivity, and... Probably also cable TV I, and... I don't know that it would cover cable television. So I guess to the to the chairman's point, I mean, so we're about to probably regulate phone systems, not just for for my layman's term, computers, right? Right, right. And we want to do that uh, for the executive branch agencies, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Which executive branch agencies aren't being cooperative? No. Uh, we're we're currently uh, do not have authority over um, the constitutional officers uh, specifically. The constitutional officers are going to be right. involved in this, and, and Secretary of State, uh, Department of Education, those those agencies. I know the Secretary of State's had a lot of interest uh, or discussion about his computer systems and whatnot. Are we fixing to to uh, take control away from him in that area? We're, no, sir. <laughs> We're not uh, not looking to take control away. We're just uh, 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 interested in establishing and having them follow the same standards and policies and guidelines that other agencies follow. And if they violate those standards and policies and guidelines, what would be the result? Uh, there's no uh, penalty under the statute. Uh, GTA sets the policy standards and the guidelines, but uh, we don't have enforcement capability. We, we uh, weigh in with the agencies and explain to them, you know, how it is in the best interest of their agency and of the state to follow the policy standards and guidelines. Have you all met with the other constitutional officers to discuss this policy, James? Uh, I have not. No. I spoke briefly with the insurance commissioner's office. What about the ag commissioner and secretary of state and labor? I have, have not. So we don't know if they like this or not? Don't know. That would be good to know. <laughs> Thank you. Number 29. I'm sorry, Representative. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can you give me an example of what it looks like now versus um, how it would look um, if we change the um, policy? I'm, I'm sorry, how um, what it looks like? It, um, since you want um, everybody to be up to the same code, what, can you give me an example of how some of the codes, how it differs now sure, from the improvement? Sure, sure. we have uh, in place uh, uh, policy standards and guidelines specifically for cybersecurity uh, where agencies have to uh, report to GTA every year about their uh, compliance and uh, uh, those agencies that do not report back to uh, uh, Representative Fleming's point um, we report those to the governor's office and then the governor's office can follow up with the agencies and say you know this is something you really need to do uh, so currently, uh, those agencies that are not covered don't report. They don't have any obligation to report, and we don't have any any visibility into what they're doing with cybersecurity, particularly. 
Okay. Thank you. We do have a definition of, had some assistance here. All right, great. For technology. Hardware, software, communications equipment, including but not limited to personal computers, mainframes, wide and local area networks, servers, mobile or portable computers, peripheral equipment, telephones, wireless communications, public safety, radio, facsimile machines, so fax machines are covered. Technology facilities included data centers, dedicated training facilities, switching facilities, other relevant hardware, software items, as well as personnel tasked with the planning, implementation, and support of technology. Senator, did, did, did any of these questions come up in the Senate? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. And I don't mean that in a... Number 15, Representative Collins. No, I'm sorry. I'm Williamson. So, uh, to the author, Bill, thank you. Uh, just, I'm sorry I just walked in a minute late, and this question might have already been asked, but um, the, the good work of the Georgia Technology Authority, who, you mentioned cybersecurity, who audits to make sure that you're, uh, the, the, does the GTA do the actual, come in and do the systems audits? I yield to the GTA on that question. Yes, sir. Uh, last year, um, actually, I guess it was in uh, 2015, the governor created a cybersecurity review board, which is made up of uh, the Georgia Technology Authority, Department of Administrative Services, because they, they do the risk management for the state, also the uh, Georgia National Guard and uh, the uh, GEMA, uh, Homeland Security. And so that board uh, really started focusing in on cybersecurity issues for the state agencies. And uh, in last year's budget, the General Assembly uh, uh, very graciously uh, uh, provided a $1 million for uh, cybersecurity assessments. And so those assessments are underway. <clears throat> we actually have uh, almost completed those, that first round of assessments and uh, have, uh, have been identifying a lot of the weaknesses in some of the agencies and, and some of the strengths in other agencies. But uh, that's, where that, that's where that responsibility is. Just a follow-up question, if I may. Is it the GTA employees themselves that are the computer specialists that actually perform those audits, or do you use third-party? Yes, sir. We have a very small staff, um, so we are contracting those and working with, uh, particularly the Georgia National Guard has uh, some, some auditing capabilities uh, that, they're, uh, that they're providing to us as well. So it's mostly contracted and in, uh, in conjunction with other agencies. So, so con <coughs> especially subcontractors yes, that are specialists in the in the cybersecurity yes, field are exactly. coming in and uh, doing these examinations. That's Thank correct. you. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, I, 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 you and I have worked together so much in the past. I've always enjoyed it, and I, I understand some of the frustration that we have with with trying to do things in a in a unified manner and the importance of being able to do that um, there is a part of me um, that thinks it's a little problematic not to have asked the constitutional officers one way or the other and um, so w with that said um, representative Fleming yes sir to the chairman's point I was going to explore that issue a little bit more um, it makes perfect sense to me that the uh, executive branch would want all its age agencies singing off the same page that, that that's that makes perfect sense i'm focused though on this idea of the other constitutional elected officers and i'm thinking particularly for the ag's office for example i mean you have some attorney client privileges issues there that i could possibly dream up an idea of why they would want to follow some different policies possibly than the rest of the state and of course you're exempting i think legislative and judicial branches right. for for that you know for maybe possibly similar reasons um would you be opposed, Senator, to amending the bill to also in that list of exclusions that I asked you about initially that we include all statewide elected constitutional officers? Let me uh, let me think about it. Rep, uh, <laughs> and if you want, and if you want to take a minute, I get that, yeah. okay? Because you know I walked in this morning not anticipating a problem until I didn't <laughs> see the word cyber anywhere. Right. Sure. Um, and, and so, just strategically and I'll let you go out in the hallway so you can discuss what you want to do but there's a part of me that says in order to have time to talk about some of the issues that sure. are brought up because we don't know about the attorney client privilege with the attorney general for example mm -hmm. then the perhaps the best thing to do is to agree to the friendly amendment mm -hmm. yep. we go, at a minimum we go to conference and if not needed we strike it or come up with some kind of yeah. 
It keeps yeah. the keeps the process moving Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we so, do not want to. I mean, we can. We definitely want to. We don't want to stop the process. Right. Yeah. Today. So what, if, if you need a minute, which yeah. is fine. Mr. Yeah, Chair, if I if I could just Mr. Uh, McCord, if I could just jump in here for yes. a second. Um, Representative Fleming, on line 99 through 102, there's a formalization of a waiver process. We currently have a waiver process because there are some agencies that can make a good case that they don't need to fall under our, our uh, policy standards and guidelines. Right. So um, we're actually formalizing that in the statute in this bill as well so that, uh, for instance, uh, the Attorney General's office could come and make a, make a good case, I'm sure, that uh, they have some uh, special needs and special circumstances there and we would grant them a waiver for that. Well, not my, I guess, I don't know if my mic's on or not. Yeah, yeah, 22. I guess my thought would be maybe it might be better to have that work in the inverse. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you thought that the AG's office was doing something they shouldn't do, it would maybe it would be better for y'all to go to them and say, hey, you know, this really isn't working and here's why, and let them be the one to grant the waiver for y'all to get into their systems. Right. I think where it really came up was um, in, in the, the cyber insurance issue. Uh, the underwriters uh, were not able to um, have the confidence in the state of Georgia and the agencies that they were able to say, okay, everything's covered. This is a this is a good risk. Um, so we had some we had some gaps and some holes in our in our visibility into the agencies, and that's that's really what we're trying to trying to address here. So of the agencies in the state that are covered by this, and I, I'm a little surprised that the word agency actually includes our constitutional officers, but. Of the number of people that we're talking about, I would think the executive branch agencies would, would dwarf the amount of employees for the ag, labor, and the attorney general and the other constitutional officers. We're talking about a small piece of the pie, aren't we? Certainly a small piece, but if, if it's the state of Georgia's insurance policy, cyber insurance policy, um, those agencies would have to be excluded from coverage if we don't have that visibility into their, their uh, cybersecurity. So as the state of Georgia, we buy insurance to cover these type things? We have been uh, looking for, for a couple of years at uh, cyber, cyber insurance policy, yes, sir. Um, a number of states, well, many states now, not just a number, many, many states are uh, buying into cyber insurance policies. Um, all you have to do is look at the state of South Carolina. They had a, a relatively small breach. I mean, I think it was like 9 million people, but, you know, I, I'm sorry. I can't remember how many exactly the records were, but um, compared to Georgia's uh, database and, and, and potential number of records, theirs was a fairly small breach. Um, they have expended about $30 million on that one single breach so far. Uh, so um, if, if, they are, if they are adjusting you, if they are looking at you for underwriting purposes, they're going to ask a lot of questions, I'm sure. Right. And if all the other constitutional officers are cooperating with you, Simply your saying that they are probably satisfies their underwriting need to know that, does it not? If we were able to uh, present evidence that they had, that they were following GTA standards and policies and guidelines for cybersecurity, I think that would be And if one of the constitutional officers didn't want to follow those, I'm sure there would be a discussion there and y'all could work that out or attempt to, correct? Uh, we would certainly attempt to, certainly. Mm -hmm. Okay. My next question would be for Legislative Council. Um, Ms. Lanier, I think, is back there. How would we describe on line 14 statewide elected constitutional officers? Would that be sufficient? Or is it? Is They're, they're to their offices. I mean, when I say the AG, I mean everybody works under him. Yeah. Uh, we would have to kind of expand out that definition to department head and private. Have they already they dropped it? Yeah. Say that one more time. Departments. Headed by elected constitutional officers of the state. Departments headed by elected constitutional officers of the state. He just gave to him. Representative, Representative Williams. 
Uh, thank you. you just, just getting back to the cyber uh, uh, cyber insurance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, are you saying that we do not enjoy any cyber insurance coverage right now? We're going completely naked right uh, now? That's my understanding correct. currently. And that, that was what really sparked a lot of this is when we tried to get it, if I'm yes, not. That's I'm, correct. That's correct. When we, we, we sought to, to cover ourselves, and then we were basically told. Um, you have issues. We need so to, we need so there's no coverage in force at all. Now. I mean, that's correct. In my thinking, I was reminded that you know we have had a breach um, in the last couple of years. So I mean, that's where I mean we have to make sure things are tightened up, and, and right. that's the concern. And you know, that's that's one of them. So thank you, thank you. I'm gonna I'm, I'm just gonna make a chairman's kind of a broad brush statement. I think there's the recognition that we need to do something, and we understand within the executive power. Uh, executive branch that we need to do this. I think the question is the the uncertainty, perhaps, of constitutional officers, and if that somehow could put them under an umbrella, right, wrong, or indifferent, of of the authority, especially if they haven't been engaged. I think that's the only concern that I'm hearing within um, within the committee. So um, I'm going to let the committee on the governor's bill have their their will with it, and. Um, we're definitely going to keep it moving at a minimum because it's not going to die. It's just it's just too important an issue to let that happen. So with that said, uh, at this time I will – any co closing comments? Ms. McCord, would, any you. thoughts? Thank you. Uh, Matt, I'd obviously ask for your favorable, fav favorable consideration. It is an important issue. It's something that is vital that we – we can't just sit around for another year and not do anything. So Right. Yeah. And, 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 the chair, and the chair agrees. All right. I got got a motion to pass, and we got a second. Second. All right. Any discussion? At this point, I'll rep recognize Representative Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On line 14, after the verbiage that says the Georgia Department of Defense, comma, after the comma, I would make a, a motion that we insert language, departments headed by elected constitutional officers of the state, comma. Shall not include, say that again, after the sure. Department of Defense on line 14. Uh, yeah, after the comma, after the Department of Defense, include the words departments headed by elected constitutional officers of the state, comma. And since that is a, an exclusionary paragraph, adding them in there excludes them. All right, I'm going to ask uh, on that amendment, I'm going to ask Senator Martin his thoughts one way or the other. I mean, it, it's, it's obviously not ideal the way we came, but I, you know, I, I will yield to, the, to the, the committee's wisdom on this at this time so we can continue talking about it and, and try to come to something. That's Ms. McCord, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, no, sir. Okay. So we've got a motion to add that. Uh, uh, second that motion. Mr. I've got a second. All right. Any further discussion on the amendment? Then we'll, we've got a motion and a second on the amendment. All in favor of the Fleming Amendment will signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The Fleming Amendment passes. Now we're in the posture of Representative w <laughs> Chairwoman Carter and Williams and a host of others that moved to pass as substitute. By substitute. By substitute. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Congratulations. Thank Do pass. Chair. And we'll continue the discussion. Thank Let's Thank talk you. offline. Thank you, sir. All right. And it's funny. We chose that one first because that was going to be the easy one. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations, Senator Tillery. You're next. Senate Bill 258. LC 288403, I think, for members of the committee. <clears throat> That's the same one I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. This, I, I hope, really is a simple bill. It only adds to Well, we're going to ask, we'll ask him, did the Senate vet this? <laughs> I hope so. I <laughs> hope right. so. We put uh, all 56 senators on those two words, Mr. Chairman. That's why we didn't have time to look at the other one, apparently. Um, this bill came out of a... I, 
in order to promote um, youth being involved in the political process, we run a scholarship project down in my district to what we hope will become annual, depending on how long the, the people up here want me to stay and the folks down there want me to stay. Uh, and this bill actually came out of the scholarship project that we ran this year. A ninth grader at Vidalia Heritage Academy, uh, looking through code, wrote a paper that basically said, um, should people be able to uh, hold civil office if they owe monies to that civil office? And we found the code section that actually banned that for counties and states, but that same provision did not apply to municipalities. She was up here when uh, we presented it to the Senate. I'm sorry that her class, class duties prevent her from being able to be here today, uh, but I'm presenting it on her behalf. We're asking for a simple two-word add to the code that we would add municipalities to that as well. Just a simple two-word addition. <laughs> All right. Any questions from members of the committee? Proper time. Yeah, that, well, it's not the proper time because <laughs> we're going to we're going to do this right, uh, Representative Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would school boards be included in this definition? No, sir. They would not, because they would not be civil office holders of. Oh, well, back up. I mean, <laughs> in which part of the definition? Did y'all vet? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. I, I do think school boards are included in the definition of the word civil office on line ten. But I do not think they're included in any of the definitions on line 12. Should they be? Um, I'll have to be honest with you, Mr. Chairman. That was not written into the uh, scholarship essay, so that was not included. But if the well, well, this may, committee would may, like to do that, that'd be fine. It sounds like a good thing that we don't want, um, you know, people to hold in public dollars. And there are usually three big areas of that. you got state folks, county folks, city folks, and school board folks. In fact, school board folks hold more money than anybody else. So might I mean might that might we add school board in there? If that would be the will of the committee, then I'm I, not I, I don't I don't understand the context of the legislation. I don't want to mess anything up. If, 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 but I just want no, to sir. All that. the this code section only deals with those who are in, ineligible to hold public office. So I, I do not believe I, I'm not legislative counsel. I defer to Mr. Lanier, but I don't think adding a comma in that additional language would do anything that would ups, upset that code or upset this part of the code. What about that, Mr. Lanier? That, that make that accomplishes the goal just uh, comma school district comma or municipality is that right yes. okay all right we've got uh, a few people lit up real well here number 16 you're, you're waving 25 who got 25 uh, the way Chairman it reads, Powell. It, it wouldn't county when it states uh, current code states county uh, state or county wouldn't county also include the school boards county school boards that normally we usually talk about them separately, and, but the dip, Mr. Lear, Mr. Lear might comment on that. Uh, the, the county is different. The school board, uh, excuse me, the school district is coterminous or co whatever that word is with the county in most places, but it is a different sovereign. Uh, we have different, uh, an independent school yeah. district, of course, are, are yeah, also separate. It's good so good the county, county and so they all the same footprint. Uh -huh. But we usually think of them as two different sovereigns. All right, um, 12, Sorry. Chairwoman Taylor, no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Going up in the first section where it talks about uh, line three, provide for ineligibility of office for holders of public money of municipalities. What if it's somebody besides a municipality that they're holding the funds for? Does this definition at the bottom affect that or do you need to name them up there also? Sorry, but. Do you know? Uh, I, I think that the, the heading, as I found out in my young 33 days in the legislature, does matter. And again, I think that's something I'd have to, again, to defer to Mr. Lanier if, if it mattered in the heading as well. We would adjust the, uh, the caption to replace the and the composition. To, to include the other two. Thank you. All right. Anybody want to speak? yay or nay or their thoughts on this? Municipal Association? Smart man. All right, great. What is the, uh, what's the will of the committee? 
do pass. Got a motion to do pass and a second. Any discussion? All right, Representative Fleming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on line 12, after the word county, I would make a motion that we amend it by inserting a comma and adding the words school district and then another comma. And we'll to check with Mr. Lanier one more time to make sure I did that right. You're getting a thumbs up to my far left. Okay. Is Senator, any thoughts on that amendment? No, sir. I appreciate the House perfecting this bill. <laughs> oh. you'd, be, you'd be a great House member. <laughs> All right. We've got, a, we've got a friendly amendment or amendment agreed to by the sponsor of the legislation. Looking for a second on it. Got a second. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed like sign. All right. Posture is now as substituted. Motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, like sign. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Our work here is done. We got one or two bills we may be looking at, so we might, might want to stay on high alert as uh, we'll just wait and see what happens over in the Senate. We may need a vehicle or two. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you for your attendance. <laughs>